It's time for Tiger Net Talk with L. Swan. You know, that's why Carolina's in Chapel Hill and USC's in California. And the university in this state always has been, always will be. Clemson. Print that. Tweet that. And I hope they come in undefeated. That's what I told you before the game. Our team believes. Our team believes. They got heart. We got greatness in us. They say we can't do it. What they say now? Down go the champs. Auburn's 17-game win streak comes to an end. Welcome back in, Clips and Tiger fans, to another edition of TigerNet Talk, broadcasting live here on the front page of TigerNet.com. Glad to be here with you once again, as always, talking about your favorite team, my favorite team. That's right, the Clemson Tigers. A couple of ways you can take part with us here on the program. Hashtag TN Talk. I'm telling you. That's the easiest way if you're a Twitter person. You see it all the time now. You should be used to it. Had a lot of people for a while saying to me, I don't really understand how that works. Hashtag TN Talk is the way to go if you want to say something to us live. Or click the Join button if you're sitting there on the front page of TigerNet and you're wondering who this guy is talking to you. Click the Join button. Come in. You can ask a question here. We can talk about whatever you want, but we've got a whole lot to get to on the program. And I tell you what, it is game week. Put the women and children to bed, folks. The tailgate gear, I, I warned you about that. You were supposed to, to, to fix up the tailgate gear like two or three weeks ago. That stuff should have been checked and ready. This should be mental preparation for the fan base. This should be your moments to, to gather yourself, to, to focus on Tigers v. Tigers in that rubber match. In this three-game series that has culminated, you know, in, in so many years, Clemson has had matchups on the horizon that have fallen off of, off of the schedule because of conflicts and maybe somebody uh, lost a game and had to replace something and, and move some things around. This one has worked out. Looking forward to that matchup in Atlanta, Georgia, the second of a two-game set between ACC and SEC. Of course, Friday, you've got NC State and Tennessee. And then you've got the Clemson Tigers and the Auburn Tigers going head-to-head -head in a tremendous game. And I expect it to be a fevered pitch in Atlanta when you talk about Taj Boyd, Andre Ellington, Hopkins, Peak, Bryant, Brown, Brandon Ford. Not, not even mentioning Sammy Watkins because, of course, Sammy's not traveling over to the game. But even you take his name out of the equation, this offense has some high-value, high-target, high-powerful weapons that everyone is excited to see this year. Will year two with Chad Morris's offense be as productive as it was last year for Clemson, especially early in the season? And if you want to get to the, that goal at the end of the year, you know that fantastic goal at the end of the year of maybe playing for a national championship. And I know some of you are going to say, don't go there. The last time we won in Atlanta was 2003 versus Tennessee. Don't talk national championships down the road. But what I'm telling you is where Clemson has started this season at number 14 in the country, the one thing you've got to admit, and we saw last year that you can climb from outside of the top 25 and into the mix with Clemson the way they did going through the Atlantic Coast Conference early in the season, starting off 8-0, getting to number 6 in the country. It can be done from that situation. But you, you have a much better opportunity when you're sitting at number 14 in the country with room to climb, and before you know it, could be in the top 10 pretty early in the picture, and, with, and then you know how this works. If you can get up near the top, you've got a real shot at it, even with one loss. So it doesn't mean that Clemson can't get there if they have a hiccup somewhere along the way. You never want it to be the opening season game. But if you lose to the right team at the right time, the possibility still exists. What I'm telling you is we have positioned ourselves for a legitimate shot. Everybody from about 15 forward has a legitimate chance. Now, you, you understand saying that means in some ways I'm getting it. South Carolina has a legitimate shot. Is, is that even possible? And they have a, a very tough schedule, but they're in that top 15. And if I'm going to say everybody there has a legitimate shot at it, I've got to throw them in the mix. If the ball bounces the right way, Last year, maybe they're playing LSU for the SEC championship and a right to go to the national championship game, at least an argument for it. So that just goes to show you that anybody in that top 15 has that chance. That's all. Point blank. 
starting out where we are, means that we have a real shot at it. Now, coming up on the program, we've got David Hood of TigerNet, senior writer for TigerNet.com. We've also got Cody Webb. I got a ton of emails saying, what's that great music that you play going to break? We're going to have Cody Webb on. He's the artist who put that song together. I'm assuming he wrote it. We're going to find out a little bit more about Cody Webb and everything he does. And I tell you what, you can absolutely make a run at the national championship this year, Clemson, where you sit. And you've got a chance on a big stage to erase a lot of those memories of last season. But before we take you out to break, i got to tell you folks about the Clemson University Conference Center and Inn. There are hotel rooms available for the Ball State game. Make sure you check them out. Contact General Manager Sharon Franks, 888-654-9020, or email SharonF at Clemson.edu. This is the only hotel and conference center on campus. It's within walking distance of the university. I guarantee you, you stay there. You stay there. You will absolutely love it. Walking distance to the stadium. You know what that means? You can put on a pretty tremendous tailgate and still get home safe. That's what I'm telling you. Check out the Clemson University Conference Center and Inn. They'll get you in there. You can stay with them, and they will take care of you. 888-654-9020. Stick around. David Hood of TigerNet.com will join us. And I figured I'd play a little sick him on a chicken since a couple of you are probably still upset at me about what I said about the Gamecocks a few minutes ago. We'll be back with more TigerNet talk after this. Sick him on a chicken. Sick him on a chicken. Sick him on a chicken and watch them feathers fly. Sick him on a chicken. Sick him on a chicken. Break out the butter and the flour, we're ready to fry. Enjoy the Clemson football season at Seasons by the Lake Restaurant. Tiger Tailgate on the Terrace at Seasons Restaurant will be held every Clemson football game day, rain or shine, home or away, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. for those day games and noon to midnight for the evening kickoffs. Enjoy a large green TV, a Bloody Mary and mimosa bar, specialty drinks, and a great tailgate menu all on the Seasons Terrace. For more information, call 656-7444. Or visit their Facebook page, facebook.com slash seasons by the lake. I hope to see you on the terrace. We scoop the poop. Dutycalls.com. When nobody else will do it. Dutycalls.com. To make that dog poop go away. Call or click for a free quote today. When nature calls. We answer. To get a free quote for dog poop removal, go to dutycalls.com now. D-O-O-D-Y C-A-L-L-S Dutycalls.com All you Midlands area sports fans, when Duty Calls asks for Jeff Bolin, he's number one in number two. Tiger fans, let me tell you about G-Dog. That's right, Gentle Dentistry at Oak Grove, your Midlands area home for all your tiger teeth. Head on over and visit Dr. Rick Jackson, who's a proud Clemson graduate. In fact, he read both books at the Cooper Library, and that's why I have to call him doctor. And Gamecock fans, don't miss out on the special they have for you either. Dr. Jackson will clean your first tooth at his regular price and throw in that second tooth of yours absolutely free. Visit them on the web at www.peacefuldentistry.com or stop by their offices located on Highway 1 in Lexington between I-20 and I-26. Are you a landowner who owns more than 10 acres that's interested in selling timber or pulpwood off your property? Cross Creek Timber is a full-service timber procurement company that buys standing saw timber and pulp wood. They're staffed with professional licensed foresters and fully insured with both workers' comp and general liability insurance. Let Cross Creek Timber develop the appropriate harvesting plan for your property and answer any questions regarding forest management. Call today, 864-517-3620. That's 864-517-3620 for your free woodland evaluation or visit www. Dot Cross Creek Timber dot com. Clemson Tigers, we coming for you. In the parking lot, got the beer on ice, and the grill is hot. On your market set, baby, ready or not, we're gonna get some. Tiger 
Welcome back into the program. Tiger Net Talk rolling along. I'm your host, Lawton Swan. Hashtag TN Talk is the way you can get with us here on the program, and we would love to hear from you. Uh, every uh, so often, you guys get a little crazy with your emails. We've got a ton of them in the box to get to. And, and speaking of the email box, I need somebody to sponsor my email box. If you want to sponsor it, let me know. We'll set it up. It would be the Domino's Pizza. It can be the Pizza Hut inbox. I don't really care. We'll take it. And we'll run with it. But I tell you who I want to run with if i got to run through some pizzas. It's my main man, David Hood. David, welcome into the program, brother. They were talking about tailgating. I've been asking you to come by and, and see us. I hope you join us this year for the big tailgate we put on over at Clemson. But more importantly, my man, thanks for being with us once again. You do a fantastic job. And I'm looking forward to spending some time with you here talking about the Clemson Tigers. And it's, it's time to get the season going. Then, are you ready to get down to the Georgia Dome? Man, I tell you what. I think the could I say as a Clemson guy, the most disappointing thing about the season might be that South Carolina and Vanderbilt is really the game that's the one everybody's wanting to watch. And you kind of, as a college football fan, have to be somewhat fired up about it. Hey, I'm excited about watching that game tomorrow night. You know, we keep hearing how James Franklin has improved things at Vanderbilt. And- uh, you know, we kind of know what South Carolina's got, and, and South Carolina's getting a lot of preseason hype and love, and it'll be interesting to see just exactly what both of those teams have. And it's on Thursday night, and, uh, you know, I'm already telling people I'm not going anywhere tomorrow night. I don't want to go see anybody. Uh, I'm staying home and, and maybe even ordering some pizza myself and, and watching that thing. That's what I'm talking about, batting down the hatches, almost like uh, what the folks over in uh, Louisiana are going through right now, except for everybody else, it's all about college football and, and not turning your attention away for that matchup. Now, the Clemson Tigers, the off season was the talk uh, for four months. You know, how does Clemson bounce back from the defeat that they took down at the Orange Bowl? I mean, you, you can't even talk about Clemson football anymore without that 70-point debacle coming up for people. This is the ultimate chance, though. Where's the mindset? Dabo Sweeney seems to be clearly focused that that's in the rear view. He's always talking about looking forward. How about the players? Can the players get past this? You know, I think they can, and it, it's kind of funny that, you know, a lot of times we forget that these are 18- and 19-year-old kids, and to them, you know, however long ago that was, seven, eight months, let's well, eight months past now. I mean, that's an, that's an eternity for them. <laughs> that's a lifetime, and it may be the last one that they played, but they aren't focused on that, and, and they don't really think about it. And one of the players told me this week, he was like, literally, the only time I ever think about the Orange Bowl is when somebody in the media asks me about it. Well, that's so, good. Yeah, that, that's you know, that's fantastic, and I think that they can put that in the past. And one of them said, you know, I'm ready to start the season. And one of the reasons that he's ready to start the season is that after Saturday night, the last game they will have played, now, let me ask you this. Clemson heading over to Atlanta, a place that's really been a, a sore spot for Clemson Tiger fans for a long time. You know, in opening games on the road or, or not at home, Clemson hasn't favored well in the past. Now, that's mostly because nine times out of ten you're opening up at home. But going on the road, I mean, do you, is there any of that? You know, I think as, as Clemson fans look at it, they think to themselves the feeling that they had going into that Alabama game back in 2008 was this was our opportunity on the big stage to open up a season. We were top 10 ranked team, and then you just get punched in the mouth. How does, you know, how does that equate? Does that even factor into this? I mean, is there some of that territorial uh, fear maybe or, or, or maybe in the back of Clemson's minds of going into Atlanta? You know, again, I, I think that that is all in, in the minds and, and in the memories of the fans because there's just a few players that are even on the six of the roster that were around for that game that, that traveled down. Dalton Freeman was one of them. He was a red shirt, didn't play that year. Andre Ellington was a red shirt. He didn't play that year. They, they were around for that. But, you know, the rest of these guys, the Taj Boyd, he knows nothing about it. Ron Peaks never played there. Um you know, none of these offensive linemen except for Freeman have, have even seen the Georgia Dome. Nobody on that defense especially really remembers it. And all the guys that you're expecting to be playmakers, this is, to them, this is their first trip to the Georgia Dome, and, and they're not concerned about Clemson's past there. And Well, I think Auburn is a is a good team, and I think that they have a chance to, to be solid. I think they're a lot like Clemson. I think I saw one 
one uh, you know internet site say this week that the two teams are kind of like looking in a mirror at each other. These are both really young teams that, that are going to get better as the season goes along, and I think this is just really for both teams a chance to to jump out and get a little attention early on, and, and the pass really isn't going to matter. And you look at that Clemson offensive line, obviously, as you mentioned, Young and Auburn's the same. And and Auburn brings in Brian Van Gorder, who's got some experience from the SEC back during his time in the 2000s, early 2000s, uh, with the Georgia Bulldogs. Fantastic defensive end uh, in Lemonier, who just is uh, – you watch film on this kid, and you think to yourself, uh, a legitimate freak of nature, one of those defensive ends like Clemson has produced – uh, and, and I think to myself, you know, how can Clemson's offensive line or how will Clemson's offensive line have prepared for, for him when really Clemson outside of Malachi Goodman has not had a whole lot of experience and those guys going head-to-head, you know, you don't get to have that preseason game like Dabo Sweeney kind of likes, like the NFL does, to give you a chance to get tuned up for what you'll see. But a guy like uh, Lemonier just brings so much speed off the edge. Is Clemson going to be ready for that? Is there going to be enough time for Taj Boyd? Well, I think that's that's one of the big keys. And in fact, I'm writing a story for tomorrow talking about the three keys to beating Auburn, and that's one of those keys because he's going to line up over there on the side where Jeff Timothy is, and you know Jeff Timothy's coming off surgery, and who knows what his mobility is like? He really hasn't been able to practice like the coaches want. And you know, as far as replicating that in practice, believe it or not, Clemson hasn't been using really Malachi Goodman to simulate women either. They've gone out and got Oklahoma transfer Kellen Jones, who's a linebacker, and who clocks in at about 225 pounds. So, you know, not too far off of the weight of, of women here. I think, the, you know, in that low 260 range. But so you can to simulate that quickness, not necessarily the strength of trying to go around and using that kind of technique. So that's what Clemson is doing to prepare. But, you know, one of the things, another key for Clemson is don't turn the football over. And part of that is going to be, are you going to be able to give Taj Boyd those two seconds, those three seconds that he needs to find players in the pattern? And, you know, one of the things we've heard out of Auburn so far this, this fall camp is that the defense and scrimmage situation, that they've given up some explosive plays. And Gene Chizik, he mentioned that word yesterday in his press conference, probably 10 or 15 times explosive. And you know that's what's worrying them about Clemson. If, if they can give Taj Boyd time, I think this offense, of Clemson can score points on these guys, but if, you know we know what happens when when Taj gets a little bit of pressure. We saw it last year at the end of the season. That's when Clemson turns the ball over, and that's when they wind up losing games. And against Auburn last season, 624 yards for the Tigers. They were up and down the field the entire game, and I think it was pretty amazing and, and spoke to what we saw the rest of the season as being down by 14 points early and even 21-7 a little later in the game for Clemson to come back and put that game on ice the way they did. Dabo Sweeney was clearly fired up. You've heard a lot of people talking about that rant that he had after the game. I think Clemson fans loved it. I play it here on my intro uh, each and every week on the program. I don't think it was anything vindictful, and, and, and Dabo Sweeney's come out and said that in and of itself, that he's never going to be disappointed in a win. But that locker room material always looms large, and and surely Gene Chizik is going to let the Auburn Tigers know about that, quote, one final time before they take the field. Uh, You know what? I'm I'm sure that that he will, and and, uh, this is all possible with more material. You know, former Auburn coach Pat Dye, he's been running his mouth a little bit, you know, talking about Clemson, and, and he's been saying stuff, and you know, a lot of people feel like Chiswick has just stolen, you know, the all-in slogan from Dabo, and, you know, it kind of goes both ways. But here's one thing that I always think about, the uh, the, the bulletin board material, and it goes back to what Miguel Chavis told me a couple of years ago when he was at Clemson. He said, that's all fine and good, and being fired up is, is fine and well, and that's great, great game. You know, it might last four plays, and it might last five plays, but then it just becomes football again. He said, you go out there and maybe you're fired up. He said, and then it lasts until somebody hits you in the mouth one good time. And then it just comes down to which team's going to be the better team. And I think that, you know, they, they, can, they can have all the bullets and board materials they want, and, and Clemson can have all the bullets and board materials they want, but it's really going to come down to which team's going to execute better, you know, not who's more fired up. And, and last season coming into to game one, you know, question marks about Taj Boyd and, and what he could do. High-profile quarterback out of high school. Then he goes on to have the season that he did over 3,800 yards, 33 touchdowns, just an unbelievable year for the guy. 
Now you look at Auburn. Kyle Frazier, because of Clint Mosley's injury, he's coming in. The kid's only 5 of 12 in his career. They put him in in the Wildcat format almost every single time last season. Didn't throw the ball. But out of high school, a big arm, a lot of expectations. How, how, how does Clemson prepare for a guy like that when you really haven't seen him play, especially with a new offensive coordinator as well? Well, I think, you know, you just kind of have to, to put yourself in the mind of Auburn's new offensive coordinator, Scott Wessler, and, and you look at Clemson's game from from last year, and granted, Clemson has a new defensive coordinator, but what was Clemson weak at? Not stopping running quarterbacks. And, you know, they might come out and try and take a couple shots downfield just to keep Clemson's defense honest, but you got to believe they're really going to try and run the football and, and establish the run and then use play action passing. Off of that, I think if you're close, and that's what you have to prepare for to try and stop a, a running Kyle Frazier or running Ontario McCaleb. But, you know, the story that I'm writing for tomorrow, I'm talking about last time we saw Auburn, they were, you know, ringing up almost 250 or over 250 yards rushing on Virginia in the Chick fil A bowl game last year. You know, a team that was considered to be, you know, not a great ACC team, but one of the, you know, maybe top five or six ACC teams from last year. And they were just running all over them. And Caleb was a big part of that. He averaged like 10 yards a carry against the Cavaliers. And so they've got the horses to make plays. I think Caleb's kind of a, a speedy guy. Frazier's a, a speedy guy. I think you're going to see them really try and establish the run, keep Clemson's offense off the field. Now, also, tight end play here could be key. Of course, Clemson. Uh, you know, really looking to get Brandon Ford involved after the standout year that Dwayne Allen had last season. But on the other side of the ball, Philip Lutzenkirchen, who's got the NFL ability, had a great season a couple of years ago, maybe a product of uh, a lot of Cam Newton's play uh, back in 2010. And a guy who Dabo Sweeney refers to as number 43, some speculate because Lutzenkirchen's hard to uh, pronounce. But nonetheless... <laughs> It, it would appear that the, the tight end play in this game could also be one of the keys. Which of these guys would you give the, uh, you know, kind of the check mark to as you've got a guy like Brandon Ford who's kind of converted into the tight end position, maybe possesses a little more speed, uh, but then you've got a guy like Lutzenkirchen who's just a, a downright gritty guy. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, right now you have to give it to Lutzenkirchen who's, you know, he's done it. He's been out on the field a whole lot. We really don't know what we're going to get out of Brandon Ford. He's gotten great reviews, and, you know, a year and a half ago against South Florida in the bowl game with Charlotte, Brandon Ford kind of had a breakout game in, in release with Dwayne Allen, but, you know, he, he just wasn't on the field a whole lot last year. It was all the Dwayne Allen show. So you still don't know what you're going to get out of Brandon Ford once the lights come on. Plus, and Kirk, you know what you're going to get out of him. He's a big physical player. I like him as a blocker, and that kind of goes back to can Auburn establish the run and then throw play action. And, you know, to me it seems like uh, when teams have success against Clemson running the football, that's when it really opens it up to tight ends. And Clemson's had trouble stopping tight ends. I mean, if you look at some of the losses to Maryland that Clemson suffered over the years and losses to Boston College, it's been the tight ends that have really hurt them along with the running game, and that, that's one of the things that kind of scares me a little bit. You're listening to David Hood, senior writer for TigerNet.com. Appreciate him joining us here on the program. And, David, we'll get you out with just a couple of more questions because I know your time is valuable and everybody's looking forward to that next article that you'll be posting tomorrow. Clemson obviously needs to run the ball to be successful this season. Anytime Clemson was uh, – the, 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 the offense stalled last year, nine times out of ten it came down to rushing yardage. More probably You could probably equate that to – uh, the fact that maybe getting down, Clemson panicked a little bit and threw the ball, and then that might have inflated the turnover numbers. But when Clemson was able to run the ball, they won games. They go out to Nevada, study that offense, to, to maybe not tip their hat as frequently on which direction plays are going. Is that going to be something that in game number one, you saw the spring game, that's about every, all Clemson ran uh, was out of that pistol formation. Is that going to be the expectation coming into this game that we see a ton of the pistol formation, or do you think that's going to be just a package that's utilized quite frequently this year? I think you're going to see a ton of the pistol, but the Chad Barnes said this week you're going to still see the, the hip alignments with the Vitage and the shotgun, and maybe you can occasionally see the eye formation. But, you know, I, uh, I heard from, from Taj and some of the offensive linemen, hey, it was something that. Chad really wanted to implement last year, and they just didn't have time. And 
And they ran it a, a few times last year, but I think it's going to be something you're going to see a whole lot of on Saturday. All right, and you look at replacing Sammy Watkins probably by committee, but what a lot of people may have forgotten already is the fact that DeAndre Hopkins was the leading receiver his freshman year at Clemson and kind of yielded his way and allowed Sammy Watkins to step into that limelight, and he still had a very productive season last year kind of being the number two guy. But the opportunities there, I know Peak's going to be starting in Sammy Watkins' place, but is this a night where you think maybe – uh, Clemson has a moment where Hopkins becomes that star among the players again at the wide receiver position, or does this turn out to be more of by committee? Well, I think it, it, it's probably going to be more by committee. Pitt don't count out Luke Hopkins. In an article that we posted today, Todd Boyd was talking about he and Luke and you know, how they have really got on, on the same page over the summer and, and how when they go up and they see a defense and they see a safety you know, maybe start to pull in a little bit or they get into a certain alignment. He and Nuke are on the same page. I think Nuke's just going to put up continual solid numbers. Uh, but if you're Auburn and you're going into the team and you're going to double cover somebody or if you're even going to double cover people, you're going to be thinking about double covering Nuke and you're going to think maybe about getting that guy in that number two wide receiver spot. You know, maybe the guy that's going to have the breakout games, Jerron Brown, who might be left on, on the outside by himself a lot and, and his backup is Martavis Bryant. And you might see those two guys really coming out. But, but, you know, I don't know that you're going to see one receiver with just wow numbers. It might be you've got five receivers with at least two or three catches. Well, David, as always, man, I, I really do appreciate you coming on the program, spending some time with us, letting the readers of your fantastic work, you know, hear from you a little bit more. And I know you do some work up there for WCCP from time to time filling in. Keep up the good work, my man. And any time you need me, feel free to give me a call, and, and I certainly would love to have you stop by the tailgate. Hey, man, I'm looking forward to seeing you at, uh, at the Ball State game at the tailgate. Absolutely, we'll do it. All right, David Hood, senior writer of TigerNet.com. Fantastic stuff as always. And I got to tell you, folks, we talk about tailgating there with David Hood. Let me tell you about Tiger Tailgate on the Terrace. That's right. You got to check it out. Before every Clemson game, it doesn't matter, home, away, you can go and tailgate with Tiger fans right there in Clemson at Seasons Restaurant. That's right. If it's a day game, guess what time you go? I'll give you the hint. 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. If it's a night game, you go a little later, go out at noon, but you can stay till midnight and spend time with your favorite Clemson Tiger fans. They've got a Bloody Mary and Mimosa Bar. I mean, just a fantastic spread for you Clemson Tiger fans. And, hey, with gas prices, what better way to save a little bit than heading over and tailgating uh, on the terrace. That's what I'm going to do if I get the opportunity. That's what you should do. Check them out on Facebook.com slash Seasons by the Lake for more information. That's home and away games. And it's within walking distance to the stadium for those home games. So just keep that in mind, you know, as you head over there uh, up to Clemson or if you're driving over to Atlanta, maybe the gas tank's getting low. You say, I, I can't quite make it. Guess what? You can go and you can tailgate on the terrace. And that would be something that you will definitely enjoy with a bunch of other Tiger fans every Clemson Saturday, rain or shine, home or away, day or night. Check them out. Now, let me tell you, David Hood has done a fantastic job, but there are a lot of people that are still concerned about the Clemson quarterback situation. I've been a guy who said, you know what, year two for a Clemson Tiger quarterback has been an issue. But Andrew writes in and says, first off, love the show, love the work you do, look forward to it every week. Heard you talking about second-year starter slump, and yes, it's gotten to every quarterback for a long time now, but for some reason, I think Taj Boyd is different than the rest. I've been watching him during pregames and even when he redshirted, and there was just something about him. I would tell my wife, Taj Boyd is going to be something big for us in a few years, and hopefully he can end that second-year slump for us because I'm really excited about what we got this year, and I know next year – is going to be even better. But I don't think people should overlook the Tigers this year. I'm not going to be able to go to Atlanta, but my tickets to the home game opener. But I've got my tickets to the home game opener, and I can hardly wait to see them Tigers storm the hill. Thanks. Keep up the good work. P.S. Taj Boyd for Heisman in 2012. So there, uh, there is some, you know, there are some people out there who have questions about Taj Boyd, that's for sure. But 
mostly because of history and trends. And as David Hood said, maybe some of that stuff doesn't really matter a whole lot. Maybe that's just Internet fodder and chat. Let me tell you who we got coming up, though. Cody Webb. I got emails, a ton of emails. I want some new songs for my tailgate music. Who's that guy talking about rocking Doug McCormick down at TDs? Who is he? He will be here momentarily. Cody Webb with us right here on Tiger Net Talk. Stick around. Are the best on the banks of those late fall, late Cartwell sunsets. I wanted to be just like Jeff Davis when I grew up. Tackling Seminoles and Bulldogs playing football in the mud. Say everybody sing Tiger Rag at the top of your lungs and we'll party like it's 1981. Blake Austin of South Carolina Farm Bureau is an insurance agent you can count on to meet all your needs. Home, auto, health, life, you name it, Blake's got you covered and he can save you on your yearly rates. Call him now for a free quote, 803-259-5008. That's 803-259-5008. Or just go to ClemsonSportsTalk.com and click on the Farm Bureau logo to be connected to Blake. Do like I do and work with the best agent around and you can tweet that. Hate the thought of shopping? All that hassle and can't find what you're looking for anyway? We understand. Retail stores make it difficult. Instead, try www.edistooutdoors.com. Edisto Outdoors features performance apparel and gear engineered for performance, comfort, and style. Edistooutdoors.com. You'll enjoy the shopping and you'll enjoy the products. Great products from people who care. Take your business to the next level with innovative website design from Foodog Media. Foodog can handle all your web, graphic, and social media needs. Call them today, 843-864-9268. That's 843-864-9268. Mention this ad and receive 10% off of your website. Foodog is a Clemson-owned business. See their portfolio at www.foodogmedia.net. May the food be with you. All I'd grow up and I'd settle down but There was 10,000 girls up in Tiger Town And it was heaven to me I used to sneak downtown with my fake I know that it is game week Clemson Tiger fans I understand that This is important I got to get to my main man, Cody Webb. Got to get him on the program. Let me tell you, uh, he does some fantastic work for you Clemson Tiger fans. And, Cody, great to have you on the program. I know you're up in Nashville doing some work, doing some recording. And if I had a voice like yours, my man, that's exactly what I'd be doing. Oh, man, you're too kind. I appreciate that. I appreciate you having me on the show. Man, uh, no problem, brother. I, I appreciate you letting me play your songs to, to bring the fans in and out of the program. I know they love them. They ask about them. As we went to break, I was just reading a message uh, from another uh, – from, from uh, a fellow named Corey Vaughn, and he says, man, love the stuff. He needs it for his tailgate. What's the name of that song? I mean, the messages came in – and I said, i got to get you on to let you tell people about yourself. So first off, for everybody, Cody, who doesn't know you, let them know where you're from and uh, just kind of a little bit of your background, my man. Man, I'm from probably one of the smallest towns in South Carolina. It's called uh, Rich Spring. Uh, you have to have Mineta behind it sometime, Rich Spring, Mineta, and people know what you're talking about. But uh, it's kind of uh, between Columbia and Augusta, Georgia, and um, I was raised there, lived there my whole life. Uh Went to Clemson and spent the best four and a half years of my life there and uh, ended up writing that song about it you were just playing. But, uh, but man, I've, I've been playing guitar since I was nine. And, uh, you know, when I got to Clemson, I really uh, started concentrating on my uh, songwriting and all that. And came to Nashville for the first time last summer and uh, uh, record, just recorded this album, uh, the new album this year. Uh, I'm actually standing here with a producer right now here in Nashville. Uh, we just ate dinner together. Uh, we just got out of the studio and... Um, uh, recorded a kind of a pilot for uh, something he's putting together um, for an EPK for the studio. So I just got to eat there with the producer, and we got we called up, and um, so uh, that's that's about the story. But but uh, we're, he's actually playing with me this weekend too in Atlanta. We got the big show coming up in Centennial Park uh, for the SDSC kickoff game. So he's playing the band with me there as well. 
Absolutely, and we'll get you to tell everybody about that a little bit more a little later before we get uh, get you off the program. But Chad wrote in. Chad said he wanted to know who sung these cool songs. He said particularly the one about Tiger Town TDs, fake IDs, etc. He says that always reminds him of his days as a freshman. Now, the only thing that you could have made that song better for me personally, I did seven years at Clemson. So, uh, could you do could you do four years in the fourteen semesters? I mean, could, could that work? <laughs> man, man, I wish that I wish that was the name of the song. I wish I was still at Clemson, man. Uh, I'd do anything to call it four years in the seven because I'd still be there. <laughs> I heard that. Well, uh, I tell you, you really have done a fantastic job, and I know Clemson Tiger fans are excited to hear from you. Now, obviously, uh, you're a big football fan. You're heading over to Atlanta for the big event that you've got set up, as you mentioned. But uh, as far as Clemson goes, you know, uh, where do you think this Tiger team this year is? What's your expectations for the boys uh, who wear the orange? <laughs> there, uh, there's always next year, but uh, this this is the year. That's, that's what everybody's saying. But, uh, of course, that's what we always say. But I'm excited about it. You know, you, you never really know how things are going to go the, after the first couple games, and uh, I just can't wait to, to see them play. So um, I'm, I'm really excited about it. I, uh, I'm hoping we, we, can, uh, we can get in the game Saturday night. We'll, we'll probably end up playing a show, but uh, – I can't wait to watch the game. Now, do you have has Clemson reached out to you at all about uh, the the songs and and I know that uh, they're not always about Clemson, but has anybody from the university said, "Hey, man, we really like that song, like what you're doing"? Has, you know, what's the reception you've gotten from the larger community at man, Clemson? Man, Clemson is is great. They they keep me going. I I I couldn't say thank you enough to everybody at Clemson. They, they show me so much support and. A uh, huge help in making making this album, and uh, you know, I just got some some really some awesome friends and really loyal fans there, and uh, I just can't say thank you enough. And uh, you know, Clemson's just been great to me, and uh, it's a huge part of my life. I mean, I'll never forget. It. And uh, my blood will always run orange. So. Now, tell people exactly what you've got going on in Atlanta, because there are going to be thousands. You know, probably close to, I would guess. 40,000, 50,000 Clemson fans who are headed over to Atlanta, maybe not attending the game, but tell them how they can take part in your venue, who all is going to be involved with it, uh, so that people can come out and support you. Yeah. Well, man, we got a, a free concert in Centennial Park where they had the Olympics and all uh, in Atlanta. It's, uh, it's free to the public. we got uh, Philip Phillips, who just won American Idol. Uh, he's playing right before us. And the band Lone Star and another band called Paris Luna. And that's... Uh, that's Friday before the NC State and Tennessee game. Um, the gates will open around 4:30, but uh, we won't go until nine that evening. But uh, like I said, it's a free concert, uh, open to the public. Uh, it's probably the biggest thing I've ever played. I'm really excited about it. But we're using a band uh, from up here in Nashville, so uh, that's why I'm up here this week. We've, we've been rehearsing for it, and man, the guys are dynamite. Everything's sounding good, and uh, I'm, I'm super excited about it. Now, you mentioned Philip Phillips, winner of American Idol, and this show has never gone off on this kind of slant before, but it's okay, you know. that I, I get to run things. I get to make the decisions around here. I'll let people uh, tell me. They, right. yeah, right. I'll let them tell me if they don't like it. Now, are, are you past the – is there a point where an artist says, you know, I can't go on American Idol? I mean, have you passed that point? Is it kind of like playing college football once you're – Maybe once you're under contract, you can't go do that. Does this have? Is that all for you know amateurs? Have, have you already left that realm? No, man. I don't. I don't want to say that. There's, there's some really great talent that's come out of American Idol and uh, you know National Star and, and shows like that. The Voice. Of, I mean, I got a lot of respect for those guys too. It's, it's not. I, I hate when people talk bad about them, but uh, you know, I feel like it's not the route I'm, I'm probably going to end up taking. Uh, you know, I feel like it's maybe even a longer shot than. Uh, than doing what I'm doing, you know, and I still got a long way to go, but uh, we're having a having a blast getting there. So, well, I tell um, you, I tell you what, I I can already tell you this, man, you got your foot in the right door because obviously being able to perform with a guy like Philip Phillips is going to get you nothing but exposure. And and I tell you, I know Clemson fans are rooting for you to do well, rooting to hear your next big Clemson song. Is there one on the docket? Do you have one? You know, is there a secret song coming out that we man, need to know I've, about? I've been, I've been writing my tail off this summer. I've, I've got a lot of new material. Uh, um, haven't written another song about Clemson uh, yet, but but we might have to work on that. I um, actually just recorded one today, a uh, uh, little video one today in a studio here in Nashville. Uh, my latest original song was called "Love Me Crazy," and uh, I'm really excited about it. I think it's one of the best songs I've ever written. But uh, can't can't wait to uh, 
do another album because we got a lot, lot more new material. So. I heard that. How about the Johnstone Blues? I think you know. I lived three years in there. I could tell you a lot of good stories. <laughs> <laughs> I, I lived, I lived, a, I lived a good solid year there. I, I don't know how I made it through, but uh, but yeah, we we had some great times in Johnstone. We could definitely write a song about that. Absolutely. Well, Cody, tell before I get you out of here, tell all the Clemson fans how they can find you, how they can follow you on Twitter. I'm sure you're all Twittered and Facebooked up. Let them know how they can get in touch with you. Yeah, yeah. look me up on Facebook. Uh, uh, check out the website. There's links to Twitter and, the, and uh, Facebook on the website. It's called www.codywebsite, and that's uh, my name, Cody Webb, and site after it. Nice. So CodyWebsite.com, and uh just look up Cody Webb on Facebook and uh, Twitter as well. And, you know, I, I just thought about it. I do have actually one more song about Clemson, but, <laughs> but I probably won't ever let anybody hear it because uh, it's about one of my professors, and I didn't like him too much. Well, he's going uh, to retire one day. I know. I, I was always scared that it would get out before I graduate, and I wouldn't graduate if, oh, I, you're, uh, you're good. if I played this song about, <laughs> about one of my professors. So. Just, just a few people have heard that one, but. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, awesome man. Well, Cody, I appreciate you spending time with us, man. I want to have you back on the show uh, real soon to catch up with you and see and track your progress for Clemson Tiger Nation. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you having me, Lawton, and uh, and I guess I'll see you at the game. All right, you want to give us a prediction? Oh, uh, I'm gonna go with. Uh, Let's say uh, 21-7, Tigers. Oh, Clemson Tigers. There you go. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. Cody. Take care, my man. 21-7. 21-7, okay. good guys. All right, we'll see you. All right, Cody Webb, folks, good stuff there from him. I tell you what, man, that music, four years in the five, it, you got to listen to the whole song because I think uh, it just fits probably most of our listeners. Uh, most of you, I'm sure, did not get out of Clemson in four years uh, or less. You know, a lot of these football players – we give them a lot of grief sometimes about, uh, you know, maybe their play on the field. These guys off the field get through in uh, less than four years a lot of times. They get their master's degree in less time than most of us get our undergrad. I mean, that's the way they, they get the job done. Uh, Jeffrey writes in, he says, I just listened to one of your most recent shows, of course, probably picking it up on the podcast. He says, especially the one with Mr. Bowers talking about Daquan. What an impressive young man. My dad and his father traveled and oftentimes appeared on the same concert ticket. What a classy young man. His father did a wonderful job. When you have a chance, please let Mr. Bowers and Mr. Sappin, as well as others, know that we're so very proud of these young men. The character they exhibit is so impressive, and I appreciate Jeff sending us that email. Uh, he's a loyal listener to the program. He has emailed us uh, plenty in the past, and I, I tell you this about Daquan Bowers. We've still got that interview up on ClemsonPodcast.com. Now, of course, you know we also have the website ClemsonSportsTalk.com. We're getting ready to move to that, and on Twitter we're now at Clemson Sports. We've made a little bit of a move. Now, coming up here on the program, we are going to get into the Auburn game, our prediction, what the Xbox has said, all of that. we got a whole lot left in the program, about 17 minutes until the hour is done here on Tiger Net Talk. Tweet to us, hashtag TN Talk. That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. My big sister's radio sends us out. My Uncle Robert's favorite song. It was nothing she ever thought about. Didn't know it was gone the day she moved out in my head if I pointed it. Enjoy the Clemson football season at Seasons by the Lake Restaurant. Tiger Tailgate on the Terrace at Seasons Restaurant will be held every Clemson football game day, rain or shine, home or away, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. for those day games and noon to midnight for the evening kickoffs. Enjoy a large screen TV, a Bloody Mary and mimosa bar, specialty drinks, and a great tailgate menu all on the Seasons Terrace. For more information, call 656-7444. Or visit their Facebook page, facebook.com slash seasons by the lake. I hope to see you on the terrace. Do you need land management, habitat improvements with an emphasis on hardwoods? Contact Thomas Forestry. They're conveniently located at 576 Riverland Drive, Suite A in Charleston, South Carolina. Joseph W. Thomas and Thomas Forestry have been maintaining renewable resources since 1977. Call now to discuss your options with Joe. 843-735-3993. That's 843-735-3993. 
Hey there, Clemson Tiger fans. If you're interested in advertising with Clemson Podcast, go to ClemsonPodcasts.com and click on the advertising link. And as always, go Tigers! Blake Austin of South Carolina Farm Bureau is an insurance agent you can count on to meet all your needs. Home, auto, health, life, you name it, Blake's got you covered, and he can save you on your yearly rates. Call him now for a free quote, 803-259-5008. That's 803-259-5008. Or just go to ClemsonSportsTalk.com and click on the Farm Bureau logo to be connected to Blake. Do like I do and work with the best agent around, and you can tweet that. This is Clemson Tom, and you're listening to Clemson Sports Talk. So sit down and have you a cold one and listen to a true American. I like driving down Clemson Boulevard. Welcome in to Tiger Net Talk, or welcome back. I guess you've been here with us. Great song there called Clemson Boulevard. Appreciate Clemson Tom recording that for us, regardless of how some of you Tiger fans feel about him. Appreciate him doing that for us. Got an email from Michael. Man, love the Tiger Gamecock picture in the background of your podcast. Anyway, can you tell me where you got it? Or can you send me a picture of someone to paint it for me? Uh, for someone to paint it for me. I'm overwhelmed with SC fans on my office. I guess that should be in my office. Thank you, iPhone. Hey, iPhones and all the jumping layers. And I feel like it's gotten worse. Or maybe I'm just trying to type faster. Tiger fan, South Carolina fans in my office and could use some more orange on my wall. Thanks for any help. That's the chicken man, Ernest Lee, right there. That was a gift, actually, uh, from my wife's aunt. And uh, it just it's perfect back there in the background. I think it's fitting. A fitting uh, poster for our program. Jonathan emails, that intro you did for the most recent TN Talk was amazing. Got me jacked hearing Dabo say, what they going to say now? You're all doing a great job. Keep up the work. Appreciate that, Jonathan. Appreciate that, Michael. And finally, our man, George. Another year of Tiger football is coming. My 43rd year following them. I agree with you. I'm a believer in Dabo. Number one thing is that we run a clean program and show good sportsmanship on the field 99% of the time. Do you remember last year we started poorly the first two games, and on your show you asked fans to predict what our record would be against the next three games, Auburn, FSU, and Virginia Tech. An 0-3 prediction was running number one, and I was probably one of them. The way we were playing, I was saying 0-3 or at best 1-2, and and all the Tigers did was show up and play. That was as satisfying a stretch as ever for me as a Tiger fan. Anyway, continue the good work. Take care. Go Tigers, and I think a run at the Atlantic Coast Conference is, championship is possible if we can beat FSU. And, George, I am with you 100% on that. I think that game, week four, is the real big matchup for all Clemson fans this season, the one you got to keep your eye on because the prize is available. And with both teams, FSU and Clemson, playing Virginia Tech, the winner of that has a little bit of a leg up, in my mind, on the conference title. But because each team, the conference – Uh, title game but because each team has to play Virginia Tech as well the other team's got a slight shot at making up at least a game they'd still need another one though to get them over the hump now we turn our attention to Auburn the PS3 prediction sent to us by our main man Sambo hashtag TN talk all you people on Twitter who want to reach us the Xbox 360 unfortunately, has a couple of flaws in it, one of which is the fact that Kyle Frazier was not quarterbacking Auburn. It had Clint Mosley in, but Mosley went 11 for 23, 175 yards and a touchdown. Ontario McCaleb only had four carries as he went down with an injury. Trey Mason came in with a solid 116 yards backing him up, and Emory Blake had four receptions for 66 yards. Now, If you know a little bit about stats, that didn't sound too good for the Auburn Tigers. On the flip side, Taj Boyd goes 22 of 34 for 389 yards, four touchdowns, and one interception. Andre Ellington only carries the ball four times and gets injured, which I know Clemson Tiger fans don't want to hear about. D.J. Howard carries 19 times for 74 yards, though. Hopkins has five receptions for 83 yards and a touchdown. Humphreys has four receptions for 50 yards and a touchdown. Uh, and 
Ford has three receptions for 20 yards and a touchdown, and Ellington has one 34-yard touchdown. So Ellington did get a touchdown early in the game. The player of the game was Taj Boyd. Clemson wins it in the Xbox, or excuse me, the PS3 prediction, 38 to 16. And this is going to be a very big matchup for Clemson. I mean, you can say that this game doesn't really hinge on anything that's happened in the past, that the belief that playing over in Atlanta has nothing to do with the mindset of this Clemson Tiger team. And this is the year I've said I really feel like we've got to put the 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 concepts that we kind of carry into games, you know, going to Wake Forest and Duke with this mindset that, oh, uh, well, it's a bad venue, so we can't play good. You know, I, I really think that Clemson's got to kind of erase all the mental issues and come at this from a, a strategic and just a physicality standpoint. they got to just believe that they are the better team on the field. If you look at recruiting class numbers, Auburn has been fantastic. But I think all in all, this is a year where anything under nine wins is a disappointment. Nine wins is a letdown for the Clemson Tigers this season. Ten to 11 wins is a great year. 12 to 13, maybe the icing on the cake, and 14, that national title if you can get there. But I really think it it comes down to embracing the fact that this is a new Clemson Tiger team. For so many years, you would underperform with a guy like Tommy Bowden at the helm. Uh, And I think for Clemson fans, it really became a scenario where Everybody was a little bit negative about Clemson Tiger football, no matter what the road venue was, no matter what the opportunities were. But I've seen, I've seen a shift. And that's not to say that everybody's bought in just yet, but I do feel like there's a shift to the belief that this Clemson Tiger team can be a very special ball club. Next year's team looks like it could be good as well, maybe better than this team. You get a lot of experience on the offensive line. You don't lose a lot of key weapons. You've got some guys who can maybe step in for a guy like an Andre Ellington. Uh, But all in all, this year, going up against this Auburn team, you've got a real chance to flex your muscles nationally, to show people that what happened last year wasn't a fluke. And it doesn't matter if you're playing in Atlanta, Los Angeles, Detroit, Michigan. The key thing is that you come out and you play good, solid football. Clemson's got to be able to establish the run. You've got to control Lemonier. You have to control him. I mean, he is an absolute freak of a player. He's got a speed rush off the edge that is unbelievable. Kyle Frazier could be key as well. If Clemson can get at him early, maybe get him rattled a little bit. I'm not exactly sold on a kid who's 5 of 12 in his career when he's going up against a guy who's played the way Taj Boyd has played for Clemson the past se- in last year's season. I know the year two jinx could be there. Clemson's going to be without Sammy Watkins, a guy who had 10 receptions for 155 yards and two touchdowns and vaulted onto the scene against Auburn last season. But nonetheless, I don't care. You go back to 1950, you take a look at the history of this series, one in which I will add, if we could figure out a way to get this game to be more frequent, I think this would be one of the best rivalries in the country. I think the two teams have a bit of an edge on their, a chip on their shoulder because they're not the state school. Alabama and South Carolina, of course, take that representation. The two Tigers, the Oranges, the all-in battle. You know, all of those things, the history, the tradition of these programs, how they're sort of linked together. I think it would be a great rivalry and one that we've seen happen. I believe it was 1987. I mean, excuse me, 1997 you had Clemson and Auburn getting together uh, in the Chick-fil-A Bowl 2000, and I believe 7 as well was a a Chick-fil-A Bowl matchup. So they've had some recent battles in the past 10 to 15 years. But now the opportunity exists that if we could get this series going a little bit more, you've got this big matchup. Clemson had the opportunity down in Auburn two years ago to beat the team that won the national championship. Let's not forget the snap infraction, which was almost called an offsides on Auburn, which would have given Clemson a first down in overtime with a chance to win the game. Instead, we missed the field goal. Game over. You know the story. Auburn wins the national title. Last year, Clemson vaults itself into national contention, and the national championship uh, became a national championship contender by midseason by doing what? Getting over the hump, coming back from 14 down against Auburn. This is a game I tell you that you've got to really be focused on. There's no doubt that there are issues on both sides of the ball for Clemson on the offensive line. 
But I really think Brent Venables, that defense is going to step up. I think the linebacker play has potential to be better than we've seen in quite some time. Venables will attack Auburn and attack Frazier. And I think it's actually going to be Clemson's defense that gets a couple of key turnovers that allows the separation that gives our Clemson Tigers the victory on the road. It will be a good one. I hope you're there. If you are, look for me. I will be looking for you. And I will be sporting the fantastic new on the prowl Clemson Sports Talk t-shirts. Check them out on our website. Go to ClemsonSportsTalk.com. The prediction for the game, Clemson gets it done 27 to 14. It should be a good one, but the Tigers pull away with a couple of turnovers by the young quarterback. You heard it here on TigerNet Talk. Till next time, as always, y'all take care now and go Tigers! <laughs>